Hi everyone, and welcome to the second in a series of videos entitled Body Parts. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how to construct a nose. Just like the lips that we saw in our previous video, noses are all slightly different. Shapes, contours, profiles, not only from the front view, but also from the side view. It's important to study how the nose is constructed. There's few parts that are important. There's the bridge of the nose, the small nostrils, as we call them, but they're actually called an ala. And of course, from a profile standpoint, whether it's a flat nose or has a ridge or a bump in it. So let's get started. I open my session of Aspire, and I'm going to draw a rectangle. In this case, mine is two inches wide and seven inches tall. I place it right in the center of my workspace. This is just for convenience. I select my rectangle and I'm going to create a flat shape. Not too thick. But the trick is I'm going to tilt it from the top to the bottom. So the bottom of the rectangle will be higher in the Z than the top of it. This is the start of the nose. As I said earlier, noses are different. There's no absolute rules. There's all different shapes and sizes. Some are crooked, some are straight. The next little trick that I've learned to do with this flat shape that I've tilted is to add a draft to it. The draft really works for the sides of the nose, between the eyes and the tip of the nose. I'm not too worried about the bottom part of this draft. That gets deleted. It's more for the sides of the nose that the draft was added. Now I need to trim some away. So I draw a vector starting from the bottom center of the nose, touching the bottom corner of that rectangle. And I follow the vector around to the opposite side. The area of the component within this closed vector is what I want to delete. So I select the vector, hold my shift key down, select the component, and just remove whatever's inside. You can see the draft operation actually made a new component. I still have my original nose shape, which I'm going to hide and just work with the component that the draft was added to. That's our beginning shape of the nose. The next part of the process is to add the alas, the wings of the nostril. Where they get positioned, how large this circle is going to be, is all dependent upon your end result. I'm just making this up as I go along to show you the process. We just create a dome, no limit, 90 degree angle. Now we need to adjust the Z height of this. This part of the nose is personal choice. Is this circle dome raised to the top of the nose or is it slightly lower? Look closely at your image that you want to work with. I'm going to copy it to the right hand side. I could use the shift control H method. And you can see the nose is starting to take some shape. I can move the domes over slightly to make the nose a little wider at that point. 
I create a copy of the visible model and work with that. Open my sculpting tool and use a little bit of smoothing. How much? Again, personal choice. How long will it take? Hmm, that's a tough question to answer. It could take a few minutes to generate the correct model you'd like to see, or it could take a few hours. But take your time. I'm going to choose the smudge tool and just add that small little curvature on the sides of the nose. Back to our smoothing tool and we continue to work the nose. The nose is an important feature of the face. It really gives the entire face character. And again, there are classic standards of noses. The broad nose, a very, very thin nose looks completely different than the broad nose. Let's try this again. I made my domes slightly larger simply by increasing the size of the circle or the dome itself. This will give us a broader nose, making a copy of the visible model. I go into my sculpting tool and start to smooth. I want to make sure that the preserved transparency is checked off because we've learned from our mouth options how we can delete that excess component material that was created. Typically I would start with a smaller diameter tool and a smaller amount of strength for this operation but I'm pretty confident that I want to have 100%. I know I can always undo it if need be. Now it's starting to look like a nose, don't you think? I add another little oval right at the tip of the nose because I'm going to add more components there for the little bump at the end of a nose. Not all noses have it. So, again, look closely at your model that you want to create. I create a component from that visible model and go back into my smoothing tool. I don't want to say that this process is endless, but it can take several attempts to get it right. Just a little tip. Every once in a while, if you're happy with what you have, click on the Keep button and then continue. That way, if you make a mistake, you don't have to start from the beginning.
I can make some other alterations by using the smudge tool and just bring in the bridge of the nose ever so slightly. Again, your choice. So the basic components are rather easy. We have our rectangle, our circle, and our cut vector that we delete then material from, and an optional oval for the tip. Lower the model in the Z and simply delete by using the replace below option. I can add another circle or shape, clicking both of those to the nose itself and delete to be able to create the nostril effect. This is another area of the nose that you'll need to decide what it should be. There's no right or wrong as long as you are following along with your picture. If I want to erase part of the component while I'm in the sculpting tool, choose the number five tool, the undo, and hold your shift key down. That acts more like an eraser and actually it removes components, removes the pixels. I like what I see, I say OK, go back into the properties and reduce the base height ever so slightly, and delete it by using the Replace Below option. Here's a few other options that could be done. We could take an existing nose that we've created and using the smudge tool, we can drag the nostril shape around. There's millions of ways, or hundreds of millions of ways, or billions of ways the nose can look. This is just one approach. Add a little bit more shape to our nostril area. And it's starting to look like something. Give it a try. See how many different noses you can come up with.
I'm going to just remove that center area of the nostril. This remove tool is not like the eraser that I spoke of. This sort of almost pushes the pixels down below the Z. Of course, I can go back in once I'm done, reduce the base height, and use the Replace Below tool again. The process is not hard, and it's very repetitive back and forth with your sculpting and replace below option. Here's the picture from our mouth video that we created the nice lips for. Let's see if we can recreate the nose. I'm gonna to have to guess a little bit because I don't have a complete picture. But the process is the same. I draw my rectangle, placing it right at the top of my nostrils. I have my cutout vector to delete the areas. And I have now an oval instead of a circle for the ALOS. And I'm going to add another oval for the top of the nose. I can see there's a taller bump at the end of the nose tip but I think it also stretches back up the bridge of the nose. In this case, I'm going to add an arc. Simply as a reference point of where I think the sides of the nose fall on the, to the face itself. So we're going to take our rectangle, create a flat shape, Again, not too thick, simply because it has to match right at the forehead or where the eyes meet. And I'm going to tilt it upward. 10% seems to work, 8% could work as well. It depends upon how pronounced you want your nose to stand. I'm okay with that. I'm going to now create a new component the one side oval. It's going to be a domed shape, much like it was before, with a base height to slightly bring it up. Constantly reviewing it in the 3D view, you can see it's a little too high. So I reduced the base height down just enough to make it look appropriate. And while I'm here, I might as well make my third shape, that oval that sits atop the nose. A very shallow domed shape. I know all of this will be smoothed out in our sculpting tool. So I'm not too worried about how it looks now. I just want the basic shapes three components, the rectangle and two ovals or circles. I need to go back now to our flat component and add a draft to it. This is part of guesswork. I don't know exactly what the angle should be, but I want to follow that profile arc that I drew earlier. And I think at this point, it looks pretty good. I know I'll be smoothing it out to meet the chin and the face itself, so I can work with this. A lot thinner than our previous nose, but it's appropriate. I'm going to use my cutout vector to delete the area at the bottom of the nose. And I may need to make adjustments because I cut the bottom of the nose off just ever so slightly. So I can drag it down. Or adjust the height itself.
just for good measure. Since I have extra component at the bottom, I'll use my cutout vector again and delete that area. And I don't need my first component anymore. I could delete it if I'd like to, but I'll keep it. Our first oval. I flip it over to the right hand side and make a component from that visible model and choosing that model go into the sculpting tool this is an example of how errors can happen simply giving the component the wrong property so I change my copy of the visible model to merge and the ovals now sit appropriately. I'm happy with what I've seen. I have two small ovals at the bottom of the nose that I delete the area to be able to create the nostril. And once I'm happy with that, I can add my other dome for the top of the nose. Move it down a bit so that it sort of builds up the material at the bottom of the nose. create a component of that visible model and go into the sculpting tool and just like before we start to smooth as you work through this you'll gain confidence in the strength and diameter of, of the brushes that you want to use there's no right or wrong it's just making sure it turns out the way you want it to. As with the mouth that we've made earlier, it's nice to have these individual component parts, the nose, the mouth, and our other items that we'll be making in future videos separate. So you can mix and match them if you wanted to create faces and you can slightly adjust them if need be. Another thing to consider in your sculpting tool is the resolution that you originally chose when you set up your job. The higher the resolution, the more pixels. So, as you're sculpting, especially smoothing, take your time. Go a little slower because your computer has to recalculate the shade of gray for the Z height. The more pixels you have, the better it is in the 3D model, but it also slows down your computer a little bit. When we're done, we save it. We reduce the base height just a bit. I like to bake things at this point because I'm rather confident that this is what I want. And use the replace below option to delete that excess material. And there's a nose. Rather simple, right? It just takes a little bit of time. This was our original picture. We can bring in our mouth if we'd like just to compare. 
to see if our face is starting to take shape. And of course, positioning it and adjusting the shape and size to where it's appropriate. Add a little bit of shadow shading, and I think it's coming along rather nicely. Let's take a look at an optional approach, another aspect of how you can adjust things. We take our component of the nose, bring it back into our sculpting tool, and we could start to add extra material to the tip of the nose, simply because it may need a little bit more weight and we smooth it out. So we wind up with a different looking nose by simply adding extra component height at that point. As you've been watching, you've noticed it takes quite a while to do this sculpting. And there's no shortcut, unfortunately. I do some smudging. I do some more smoothing. Just simply to adjust it. It's all about the visuals. What does it look like? How we got there was rather easy simple component shapes. The real job comes with the sculpting tool. I keep looking at the picture and comparing it to my 3D model. And we're getting closer. I probably will spend another hour or so just on this nose part. But not to worry, I won't bore you with the details. I keep it, and I'm good with it. So that's the start of the nose. When it gets added to the face, the sides will blend in nicely, and I can make more adjustments to the tip and to the nostril area. Of course, save it as a 3D clip art so that we can always have an option to bring it in later. Make sense? I hope so. So, do you remember the face that I started in the previous lesson? Let's take a look at it again, this time focusing in on the nose. So I have my picture and I draw some vectors. I'm going to change the contrast simply so I can see the vectors clearer. I don't have a square rectangle, but something more rounded. I have my circles for the sides, as well as my cutout, as well as a small little vector for the nostril itself. That's about all that I need. I select my first vector. Create a domed shape this time, not the flat one as we did previously. And of course, I'm going to tilt it, set the property to merge. And that's the component I start with. I think it's going to look okay, because I can envision there being more of a rounded nose than a flat nose, and of course rather bulbous at the end. 
So I'm going to keep that. Just as in the other attempts of the nose, I'm going to add a draft. And this becomes important because, as I've said earlier, for me, the draft is just the sides of the nose. I'm not concerned with the bottom of the nose or the tip. That's going to get deleted because of our cutout vector that we've created. But the sides of the nose looks appropriate. I choose my cutout vector and my component. You could see I drew the vector right around the tip of the nose and, of course, around the alas. Choose my vector, choose my component, and delete everything that's inside of that. I like the sides of the nose. I think I can blend that well into the face I'm eventually going to create. Choose my one oval for the left hand side. Create a component dome. Of course, set the property to merge and adjust the height as need be. No magic number, no absolutes, it's whatever you like to see. At this point, I think I'm going to tilt it up from the left to the right. I think the nostril area looks tilted to me from the picture. Of course, we can zoom in on the 3D view to take a look. And I think that's more appropriate. Apply that, close the window for Create Shapes. Choose my small little vector that I drew for the nostril cutout. And choose my dome and delete what's inside that closed vector. I'm going to adjust these windows just so I can see it a little bit closer. Choose the dome. Mirror it to the right side. Create a component from that visible model. And of course, into the sculpting tool. First up, do some smoothing. I want to smooth out the edge of the nose and nostril area without adjusting the transparency. So I still have that checked. The bridge of the nose gets worked on. I keep it because I'm happy with it so far. It's a rather quick and easy nose to make. Some basic vectors and some basic shapes with a little bit of sculpting. Let's take a look at the picture. It fits appropriately and it looks correct. So let's compare. We may want to adjust the nose ever so slightly, making it a bit wider at the bottom where the nostrils are or not. 
but I do know that I see that there's a flat area on the nose itself. It's not as rounded as I originally thought. So we go back into our sculpting tool. If we have our picture or image selected, we can also use that as a transparency so that we know where we need to adjust things. Now it's starting to look a little bit better. There's some texture on the sides of the nose that I'll need to add later, but I'll wait till I get the rest of the face. And some slight additional changes. And one final go around with the smoothing tool for the edges. I want to make sure that I don't have too much problem when I actually create the face and add the nose to it. Select our component. Reduce the base height. and replace below. That's the process. I hope you're starting to see how easy this could be, but also how challenging. The component creation is easy. The sculpting takes a little bit of time. So don't rush it, don't get frustrated. After a little bit more work, this is the end nose that I came up with. Let's compare it to the picture itself. I think it came out pretty good. I added some texture to the sides of the nose, as well as to the top of the bridge. I hope you've learned a little bit through this process. I hope you're willing to try it and work along with me. In our next video, we're going to take a look at how to create eyes. And as I've titled it, the eyes have it. Just a short note about the eyes. They're probably one of the most difficult pieces to make within the face. Sculptors for centuries have always had trouble with eyes. So we have a few techniques in the next lesson to learn and see which ones you like. I hope you'll be able to join us for that video to learn about eyes. If you'd like to learn more about the software, subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of the next video. Have a question? Send me an email, mmatmazolic.com. I'll do my best to help. Thanks for watching. Enjoy.